Hey, what's up everybody? I'm out here playing with this badass hearing protection that we got from theadsets.com and I'm trying to learn the differences between these two different models of the Sword and Supreme line. Today, I'm looking at the Sword and Supreme Pro X and the Sword and Supreme Pro X LED. I got a pretty cool discount that I'm gonna share at the end too, but tell you what, let's get to it. All right, so these are some absolutely crazy active hearing protection headsets. So as always, let's go backwards. I'll unbox it first, show you everything that comes with it. We'll go over all the features, test the sound quality, the sound amplification. And finally, I'll show you some really cool radio setups you can integrate these headsets into. So taking a look first at what comes in the actual box, let's start with a Sword and Supreme Pro X LED. All right, so let's get everything out of the package here. So we'll go and open everything up. And first thing, let's grab this headset out of here. I have to say right now, that multicam looks absolutely awesome. Yeah, that's badass. All right, so what's on here? Uh, just something that's come with it. What's on the back? Uh, okay, nothing. All right, what's first? We do the man, no, not the manual. All right, what is this? Oh, okay. So this is just a 3.5 millimeter jack if you need to like have input into your phone or something else. Okay, and then I guess we'll take a look at the instructions. So let's see what's all in here. It shows all the different features of all the different models. You can check this out if you want to, all the other instructions. What's on the other page? Da, da, okay, and that's it. That's great. Great, best unboxing ever. So they both come with the same stuff, so let's skip the other unboxing. But tell you what though, let's dig a little deeper and let's see some of the features that come with this headset. And then maybe we can spot some of the differences between the two models. The first thing I immediately noticed is that the Sword and Supreme Pro X LED has gel cups included. This allows the wearer to keep a clean seal with a set of safety glasses and has a ton more comfort. The Sword and Supreme has just standard hearing cups. I think they're the same as my original Peltor 300s. While this may seem like a small upgrade, a proper fitted set of gel cups is actually pretty pricey and they're worth their weight in gold on a long range day. I really upgrade almost all of my headsets to the same gel cup style. All right, but what else do we have? Both sets have a 3.5 millimeter input jack. I'll show you some of the cool stuff we get to use that for later. And the only other obvious one is that the LED version has included LED in the headset and the basic Sword and Supreme does not. Yeah, rocket science, I know. The only other difference I'm noticing is actually in the headbands themselves. The Pro X LED version has a nice cushion cover that I found to be super comfy. You can even remove it if you wanna put your own custom styled cover on so no one steals your fancy headset. The base Sword and Supreme has a standard leather strap that isn't removable, but is plenty comfortable. I've seen some other reviews and some people really love the leather. I don't know, I'm just not really one of them. Anyway, let's turn this thing on and let's see how it all works. Both headsets use a power and volume button located on the side of the headset. Just hold on to the button for a few seconds and you'll hear a chime indicating it turns on. I like this a lot better because my Peltors just scream at me when they're turning on. Power on. I know you're turning on. I'm the one that did it. The headset also uses two microphones for multi-directional sound. This allows you to easily identify the source of sound and its relative location to you, even with your headset on. It seems like a super small thing, but it's absolutely crazy when you actually put them on. But how do, I, how do I turn up the volume on these? The volume buttons are placed on either side of the headset with the plus facing rearward and the minus facing forward. Pressing the plus or minus button gives an auditory tone to identify the volume has changed. So from our brief look at the instructions, it seems like the Pro X LED actually has one extra level of sound amplification, but we'll see if that makes any sort of difference when we actually do the sound test later on. Next, let's look at how we installed the battery. This can be a bit tricky, but it's not difficult. Seriously, my internet warriors, I have full faith you can handle this without complaining. The battery compartment has a knurled knob that holds the batteries in place. They're held together fairly tight, so you gotta kinda bang it out of here. Now, there are actually two, yes, two batteries inside this compartment. One is down below the first. Simply give the headset a nice tap, and the bottom battery falls out. To reinstall, orient the first battery correctly and then make sure it falls into position. Then you can orient and insert the second battery and then screw back on the knurled cap. I have full faith that you can figure out <laughs> batteries, but uh, let's figure out how to turn this LED on. 
This took me a second and I had to refer to the manual. Just press the plus and minus buttons together and you'll hear a short chime to indicate the LED is turned on. I really like this because it's not some like 1000 lumen light that's like designed to give away my position. How cool would it be if this was red though? Anyway, let's test the sound quality of this thing. I purchased a lavalier microphone that we can place into the headset so you can hopefully catch the quality of the headset sound. Bear in mind though that the sound is coming out of a radio, going into a microphone, going into a speaker, going into another microphone, and then coming out of your speakers. So <laughs> hopefully this even works. First, we'll test the Sword and Supreme Pro X LED. I'll place the microphone within the headset, and now you aren't able to hear any outside sounds from the radio. Now let's power this thing on so you can hear the difference. At noon in Omaha, it was cloudy. The temperature was 72 degrees, the 2.63, and the relative... In real life, it's pretty insane. Due to the multi-directional sound, you can barely even tell that you have a headset on. All right then, let's test our Sword and Supreme Pro X next. Again, you can hear the sound of the radio naturally. And I'll enclose the microphone within the headset. Then turn on the headset so you can hear the quality of the sound through this headset. Highs in the lower 80s. South winds 10 to 20 miles an hour with gusts to around 30 miles an hour. Friday night. <laughs> yeah, so they sound exactly the same. So it doesn't really matter which model you get. You get some absolutely superb sound quality. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, Walsh, do all headsets have the same level of quality? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's test a different one. Here's a comparison of our Walker Slim with the same audio test. First, our radio sound naturally. And then enclosed. Now I'll turn it on so you can hear the quality of a lower priced headset. An isolated strong to severe storm is possible along the Missouri River Valley or in western Iowa. So hopefully you can hear the difference at home. It's mind-bogglingly different in person because the walkers don't have that same multi-directional sound. Actually, I misread the instructions. Since these are both the Pro X, they both have the same five levels of sound amplification. So let's go test that right now. Okay, we got our radio on. Turn the headset on, and now I'll go through all the levels of sound amplification. So as we saw, we saw that extra level of sound amplification, that fifth level, that's gonna be on these Sword and Supreme Pro Xs that you won't see on the Sword and Supreme Pro line. So you may be asking yourself, why on earth do I need that extra fifth level of sound amplification? And it's a little bit subjective, but I think it's awesome. In a tactical or home defense scenario, suddenly you have both protected hearing and this superhuman multi-directional listening. At the top setting, I can hear feet moving against carpet. In a situation where I don't know what I'm responding to, I'll gladly take hearing as a superpower. Even standing outside, it's amazing all the different small things that I can actually hear. This is a significant tactical advantage over whoever doesn't have a set of these. Looking at the sound cutoff, I found it filtered the higher noises seamlessly without cutting all audio during loud noises. Some of the cheaper headsets will actually react to loud sounds by cutting off all audio going to the headset, which can make conversations super frustrating when you're at the range and there's like a string of fire going between all the shooters. Also, remember that 3.5 millimeter jack I mentioned earlier? We can actually use that 3.5 millimeter to connect into some basic radios thanks to our friends over at Comgear Supply. I'll put a link to all of these connection points down in the description, and you can also use our discount code to save a few bucks. For this demo, I wanted to use the most basic setup possible and connect them to a simple Beofang radio. The first part of this setup uses a two-pronged Beofang connector that goes into a five-pin QD. The QD part's important because then we could just change out our radio and just get the correct interface into the same QD and then just use the entire same comm setup. I love that. The QD then moves from a microphone to a two-prong headset jack for like 3M, Peltors, Howard Lights, whatever. For mine, I use one more adapter to go from the 2-pin to the 3.5 millimeter and connect it into the headset. 
So then this whole setup allows me to take the whole thing to one more level. So not only do I have radio communications, but I also have superhuman hearing protection while I do it. And yes, in case you're wondering, the headset and the radio have independent volume adjustment from one another. Mostly sunny. A slight chance of showers in the morning, then a chance of showers and a slight chance of thunderstorms in the afternoon. It is stupid cool. All right, so let's get into the pros, cons, and do I recommend it. The first one by far is the multi-directional listening and the sound amplification. Oftentimes you get stereo hearing or sound amplification, but rarely do you ever get both. And this combination is a game changer in any encounter. So for my next pro, I'm actually gonna lump two together, and that's the 25 decibel noise reduction rating, plus the sound cutoff implementation. The Sword and Supreme Pro Xs have a seamless method for loud sound cutoff, and it doesn't chop the audio in any way. The experience is just seamless. You can tell there are louder sounds easily and exactly where they are coming from. And the higher noise reduction rating makes them great to be used at an indoor or outdoor range. And my last pro is actually the shape of these headsets. Now we see why the battery tray is a little special, because they want to keep the headset in a low profile. This allows them to stay out of the way and not run into anything, and also has a thin profile to not impact your cheek weld. Now I don't know which ones of you out there are out here all crazy with your cheek weld, but that's not the point. So for my first con, I don't like the standard padding that comes with the regular Sword and Supreme Pro X. The padding is just standard and what you use on most headsets. This is dying for an upgrade and a big reason why I recommend the Sword and Supreme Pro LEDs over the basic model. Another con is that they don't collapse down very well, or at least I can't figure it out. The headsets don't form down to a thin profile. It's not a huge issue, but it makes it so it doesn't fit well into any of my range bags. What do you, what do you mean those are all lame cons? You want me to do a real con? Okay, I guess a uh, real con, uh, it, it would, I guess it would be the price. The Sordens are at the top end of the price scale. It's important to know if you even need this level of headset, but if you do, you immediately recognize the value. You'll never need another headset again, and you can literally hear everything. So then do I recommend it? I absolutely do. As long as your wallet can take the beating, I highly recommend these over the cheap $50 headsets that we all have. Plus the multi-directional sound fidelity and volume amplification would be incredibly useful to throw on in a bump in the night scenario or a tactical situation where super hearing may be extremely useful. Overall though, I hope this review of the Sword and Supreme Pro X LED and the Sword and Supreme Pro X was helpful for you in making your purchase decisions. If you're interested in purchasing any of these headsets, I'll put a link down to T headsets down below in the description. As a small secret too, you can fill out the product request on the website and use code BR549 to save yourself a few bucks. Coming up in the future, I'm gonna also show you a couple different tiers of headsets and go over what you get at each price point so you know how to save some money and get only the features that you need. As always though, thanks to our Patreon supporters. You're the ones that make all this possible and I love you for it. And thanks to all of you that like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below if you need to get yourself a set of Sword and Supreme Pro Xs. All right, everybody, wash out. What do you mean I look like I'm just playing in the yard? This is very important.